An explosion of black fungus infections hit India this year, as COVID-19 infections left patients vulnerable to the effects of the fungus, officially known as mucormycosis. The U.S. is now experiencing its own fungal spread, with COVID-19 again cited as a factor. Here's what you need to know. A deadly fungus known as Candida auris has been spreading through nursing homes and hospitals across the United States and in five cases has proven entirely resistant to all existing antifungal medication, according to the New York Times. The fungus is a form of yeast that is dangerous to hospital and nursing home patients with existing medical problems. The New York Times reports that between 5 and 10 percent of those carrying it develop more serious infections. Once it enters the body, as opposed to sitting on the skin, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says one in three patients with invasive infections die, although it adds that these people are usually already seriously ill. Since 2013, more than 2,000 Americans have been identified as being colonized by Candida auris, but in a major development on Thursday, the CDC announced that five patients in Washington, D.C. and Texas had infections that did not respond to any of the three major classes of antifungal medication. The Associated Press reports that the treatment-resistant fungus has spread in healthcare facilities through contact or via contaminated surfaces, and the New York Times explains that COVID-19 has likely helped accelerate the spread. Shortages of personal protective equipment caused by the pandemic and high numbers of people using ventilators could be key factors in the fungus's proliferation, with patients who have lines or tubes entering their body carrying the highest risk of infection, according to the CDC. Of the five people who were fully resistant to treatment, three died. In that context, the New York Times emphasizes two aspects of the story that are most concerning. Firstly, the fungus is increasing resistance to medication. The kind of resistance to medication that was reported by the CDC on Thursday has previously been reported in three patients in New York. However, those patients had already received antifungal drugs where the recent patients had not. The crucial difference is that in the previous cases, scientists concluded the resistance to the drugs formed during treatment, according to the Associated Press, whereas here, the fungus arrived in the patient's bodies already resistant to the drugs. According to the CDC, each year in the U.S., at least 2.8 million people are infected with antibiotic-resistant bacteria or fungi, and more than 35,000 people die as a result. The New York Times characterizes this as a sobering reminder about the threats posed by antimicrobial resistance from superbugs like MRSA to antibiotic-resistant salmonella. But it also emphasizes one key human factor in promoting this resistance. Nursing homes and long-term hospitals operate as a weak link in the U.S. healthcare system, it explains, because they are often understaffed and do not have the equipment required to pursue rigorous infection control measures. Furthermore, infected patients move freely back and forth between these facilities and acute care hospitals. They are cauldrons that are constantly seeding and reseeding hospitals with increasingly dangerous bacteria, according to one former lieutenant governor of New York, who now leads the the nonprofit committee to reduce infection deaths. You'll never protect hospital patients until the nursing homes are forced to clean up, she said. Yet, the opposite appears to be happening. According to the New York Times, skilled nursing homes and long-term care facilities are taking in an increasing number of patients who previously would have been in hospitals instead. There are now about 400 long-term care hospitals across the country, up from about 40 in the early 1980s, according to the New York Times, citing a study by the National Bureau of Economic Research. Changes in Medicare reimbursement rates have created a financial incentive for this expansion, it says. Additionally, according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, cited by the New York Times since 2012, the number of these skilled nursing homes with ventilator units rose to 436 from 367. With patients using ventilators bringing in extra revenue, the cause of that increase is clear, but the capacity to increase profits has not been matched by better staffing. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services gave over 1,400 nursing homes across the U.S. a one-star rating for staffing in 2018. Clearly, there are a wide variety of factors involved in this story. A lack of antifungal drugs being produced is another huge discussion point that could be opened out. But questions should clearly be asked about the role of nursing homes in the spread of this fungus and about the system behind those nursing homes that incentivizes bad practice. Never mind the chronic lack of development of new antimicrobial drugs under the current funding model. The U.S. does not want to get itself into the situation India is facing right now. Even as a deadly second wave of COVID-19 ravages India, doctors are now reporting a rash of cases involving a rare fungal infection, also called the black fungus, among recovering and recovered COVID-19 patients. The infection has a very high mortality rate, and treatment often involves the removal of an eye. Here are the details. 
The BBC reports that surgeons in India are reporting a sharp increase in the number of mucormycosis cases in patients who survived COVID-19. Mucormycosis is a rare fungal infection that is caused by exposure to mucor mold, which is commonly found in soil, plants, and even in the mucus of healthy people. It affects the sinuses, the brain, and the lungs, and can be life-threatening in diabetics or people with weakened immune systems. The infection has a frightening mortality rate of 50% and often requires the removal of an eye or sinus tissues. Diabetics who survive coronavirus are especially at risk. Some doctors believe that's because diabetes lowers the body's immune defenses, then coronavirus exacerbates the problem, and then steroids, which help fight coronavirus, acts like fuel to the fire. Steroids reduce inflammation in the lungs for COVID-19 and limit the damage, but they also reduce immunity in both diabetic and non-diabetic COVID-19 patients. It is thought that this drop in immunity could be triggering India's spike in mucormycosis cases. Mumbai's busy Scion Hospital has reported 24 cases of the fungal infection in the past two months, up from six cases a year. 11 of them had to lose an eye, and 6 of them died. Most of the patients are middle-aged diabetics who were struck down by the fungus two weeks after recovering from COVID-19. If you're interested in learning more about COVID-19 and other strange diseases, here are some more videos about these fascinating phenomena. In what reads like a concept for a horror film, scientists have discovered a new species of parasitic fungus that turns flies into tweaking, parasite-spreading zombies. Here is what they found. Two new species of fungi have been discovered in Denmark that turn flies into zombies and eat them from inside out, while the flies shoot out fungus spores like rockets. The new species, Strongwell C. tigrinae and Strongwell C. acerosa, infect two types of Danish fly, Coenotia tigrina and Coenotia testacea, according to research published in the Journal of Invertebrate Pathology. Spores from the fungus stick to the fly's cuticle and make their way into the abdomen, where they bore large holes from which thousands of torpedo-shaped spores burst to infect other flies. The fly goes on to live for several days, while the fungus devours its genitals, fat reserves, reproductive organs, and lastly, its muscle. During this time, the fly continues to interact with and spread spores to other victims, although researchers say the fungus only infects between 3% and 5% of flies in a healthy population. Researchers from the Natural History Museum of Denmark and the University of Copenhagen's Department of Plant and Environmental Sciences suspect the two fungi may produce substances like amphetamines. These chemicals keep their hosts alive and energized until there is nothing left in its abdomen but fungus. Why is this disgusting new discovery important? Researchers believe the amphetamine-like chemicals that keep the flies invigorated also keep other microorganisms away from the flies' wounds, and this could lead to health benefits for humans. Speaking to The Guardian, University of Copenhagen ecologist Jürgen Eilenberg said, We would definitely like to continue our research, as doing so has the potential to discover and later make use of these substances, perhaps in medicine. Scientists have identified a fungal pathogen that hijacks hapless fruit flies and puppeteers them to their death. New UC Berkeley research has found that when the Entomophthora musca fungus infects fruit flies, it infiltrates the nervous system early on. The insect is relatively unaffected while the fungus feeds off its fat stores but begins acting abnormally once the pathogen invades and destroys its organs. Eventually, the fly is forced to climb to an elevated spot where the fungus grows out of its proboscis and sticks the insect to whatever surface it's on, cementing it in place. The fly is made to raise its wings to a 90-degree angle before dying, allowing new spores to be ejected from its exposed abdomen to infect new hosts. The existence of the fungus, whose scientific name means destroyer of insects, has been known for over a hundred years. Similar pathogens exist that hijack ants and aphids, but scientists have yet to figure out exactly how. The Berkeley researchers are especially curious about how the puppet master fungus gets the fly to override survival instincts and climb to its death and are now focusing their efforts to uncover the answer. It has been well documented that people with diabetes and heart disease have a higher chance of dying if infected with the coronavirus. Now scientists in China have found out why. Here is what they discovered. Molecular biologists at the Chinese Academy of Military Medical Sciences have found a reason why COVID-19 patients with heart disease and diabetes are more likely to suffer serious complications. The SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus is coated in spike proteins. The spike protein possesses receptor-binding domains that the coronavirus uses to pry open a cell's ACE2 receptors before penetrating the cellular membrane. The spike protein has two sections, subunit 1 and subunit 2. The S1 subunit of SARS-CoV-2 binds to cholesterol and possibly to high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, a particle that transports cholesterol. 
This allows the coronavirus to essentially hitch a ride on cholesterol molecules as they seek to bind to the regular cell receptor, SRB1. SARS-CoV-2 cannot exploit the SRB1 receptor directly, but this brings it into close proximity of the ACE2 receptors that it uses to gain entry to cells. The researchers, who published their findings in the journal Nature Metabolism, discovered that blocking SRB1 inhibits infection. They propose using drugs that target SRB1 as antivirals to limit SARS-CoV-2 infection. New research coming out of China may hold the key to dealing with the world's massive plastic waste problem. Plastic is not easily biodegradable and can take thousands of years to decompose. A group of researchers found Aspergillus tubingensis, a common soil fungus, at a dump in Pakistan. Under laboratory conditions, it was shown to break down plastic in weeks, not years. Aspergillus tubingensis has previously been found in patients with lung conditions, such as cystic fibrosis. The fungus used its roots to break apart the plastic, but its effectiveness was found to be influenced by other factors, such as temperature and pH levels. Researchers say that tweaking these could pave the way for fungi to be used in waste treatment plants or in soils impacted by plastic. Officials from the Colombian Agricultural and Livestock Authority have confirmed that the tropical race 4 fungus has spread to the country's Cavendish banana plantations. Cavendish bananas dominate the global export market. The Cavendish are a monoculture, meaning they have identical genetics and are therefore equally vulnerable to the fungus. Food producers tend to raise crops with little to no gene diversity in order to grow fruits and vegetables efficiently and at a lower cost. Panama disease tropical race 4, also called TR4, is spread through infected planting material as well as infested soil and water, according to PromUSA.org, a platform that shares information related to bananas. Once the fungus is in the soil at the Cavendish banana plant, it stops water from entering the plant, essentially disrupting its vascular system. The infected plants eventually stop producing fruit. According to PromUSA.org, the TR4 fungus cannot be removed from the plantation soil by use of fumigants, a type of pesticide for fields, or by fungicides, a type of chemical to destroy fungus. The website suggests rotating the banana plants with fungus-resistant crops, such as leeks, in order for bananas to continue to be produced in the same soil. According to National Geographic, the TR4 fungus was first identified in Taiwan and has since been found in Southeast Asia, Australia, the Middle East, Africa, and now in Latin America. This is not the first time the banana industry has faced this kind of crisis. In the 1950s, the Gros Michel was the main variety of banana grown for export. It was declared commercially extinct in 1965 due to a different strain of the Panama disease. Gros Michel trees were burned down and it was replaced by the Cavendish, which was immune to that disease. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.